Hello and welcome to News 9. I'm Ms. Chapain. First up, the BJP candidate from Mandya, Shivalingaya, was in for a shock. His wife's Skoda car was attacked by miscreants near Hedbara village. The miscreants poured uh, petrol on it and set it on fire. The driver escaped uh, from the attack, however, fire tenders rushed to the spot and doused the flames. The car was on its way to drop the BJP carders after campaigning for the day. The case has been registered with the Hebbara village police station. Well, this uh, is Shivalingaya's wife's uh, Skoda car that was set on fire by unidentified miscreants who came on their motorcycles. Fortunately, the driver of uh, the vehicle managed to escape unscathed and this particular car was being used to drop party cadres after a round of campaigning in Mandya. Police officials have rushed in and these are the charred remains of uh, the vehicle as we can see the seats inside the interiors of the car have been completely blackened thanks to the fire and this is the fuel that was used to set the vehicle on fire. Police officials are uh, questioning eyewitnesses, the driver as well as we'll soon be questioning the wife and uh, the man himself, Shibilingaya, as to if they have any doubts as to who it could be. This comes in the backdrop of a heated contest in Mandya ahead of elections. <laughs> Well, in fact, these are the scenes uh, being witnessed in uh, Mandya, quite horrific scenes. We understand that uh, the election heat is uh, rising with each passing day, but such horrific scenes only insult the democracy that we live in. Here are bike porn miscreants who have set a candidate's wife's car on fire. <laughs> Well, after Narendra Modi's visit to Rajnikanth's residence, it is worrying Congress as the Talaiwa's personality might influence the voters in large numbers. Congress is now seeking to meet with the superstar to set the balance right. The panicked Congress is rumored that it wants to ensure that it does not come across as support for the BJP. Sources say G.K. Vasan of the Congress, who shares a friend, uh, her friendly relationship with uh, Rajnikanth, has been roped in to make the meeting possible. Barring a few districts in Tamil Nadu, the BJP's presence in the state is minimal and the National Party was hoping to cash in on the star actor's large fan base. With over 50,000 fan clubs in Tamil Nadu alone, the 63-year-old actor has refused to take the plunge into politics despite demands to do so. Well, just yesterday, Narendra Modi met uh, Rajnikamp. It was a much-anticipated meeting as uh, it was a clear indication that the BJP was seeking Rajni Khan's support to open voters in Tamil Nadu. Well, Rajni Khan has had a history of uh, political affiliations. In 1996, he had supported the Congress DMC alliance in the state and uh, the alliance had gone on to get a thumping victory in the elections, after which uh, he made a return in 2004 and said that he will be voting for the BJP. But uh, the BJP did not manage to secure, did not get even a single seat in the elections. In 2009, L.K. Advani approached Rajnikanth again to support the BJP. But Rajnikanth uh, had sunken into political wilderness and had refused to do so. And uh, just yesterday, after much uh, persuasion, Narendra Modi had met the Talaiwa. And now uh, Congress is uh, hoping to make the meeting happen with Rajni Gandhi as they fear that uh, this Modi Rajni meeting could have a major influence on voters. Let's not forget that Rajni Gandhi is one of the th tallest actors ever across uh, the country and his presence, of course, the highest in Chennai as well as Tamil Nadu. Well, with states going into polls uh, one by one, the election momentum is gaining steam. Take a look as to how pre-poll activities are unfolding in Simandra and Telangana. 
Tamasi Mandra and Telangana are all set for a historic election this Lok Sabha polls. And with that, political parties are doing all they can to strengthen their credibility with the electorate. With the Lok Sabha polls impending, notes for votes practice has surfaced in both Simandra and Telangana. Political parties are bidding to purchase voters, luring them with money. Money is being transported in buses, cars, ambulances and whatnot. The election watchdog, which had keenly monitored the Parishad and local body elections in United Andhra Pradesh last year, had seized rupees 100 crore. The whopping sum is the money that was to be distributed for elections. <laughs> Tech post Ghani, flying squads Ghani, eight parts Shamu, Ghani President in Chikuda, what's an information Merku, Sultanal Merku, almost one the court the Rupailo, Ipadavar could see Chadam the Rigeti. With the Lok Sabha polls fast approaching, the Election Commission is maintaining a strict vigil in both the states. Further, the election watchdog is also spreading awareness amongst youth to help them catch the lawbreakers. They have urged young voters not to fall for the decoy. Note for vote is not the only policy used by political parties. Large quantities of liquor is also being transported in many parts of the state. That apart, YSR Congress workers have also begun a lucky draw for people who vote for their party with the Wagonar as the prize. The police who learnt about this seized the car. Political parties are resorting to unethical practices just to move voters. But the election commission is hoping to crack down on this with the help of the youth. Hopefully, it works out well for them. Rahmat Kanchkar, News 9, Hyderabad. And while the irony is quite chilling to say the least, elections are around the corner but there are hardly any voters in some regions. There are several such villages spread across the state's most backward districts. The districts of Gulbarga, Yadgir, Bellari, Raichur, Koppal and Bidar represent the most backward regions of the state. There is hardly any industry worth its name and most people are forced to migrate either to other parts of the state or the country in search of livelihood. This kind of labourers called the migrant workers comprise very often of the bottommost segments of society. With elections around the corner and the campaigning fever reaching a new high, there is something amiss. Yes. There are netas, but ironically, not enough voters. That is the chilling truth. Wherever you cast your eyes, you see locked homes. What are power and not votes? That perhaps sums up the issue. People want jobs and they have to travel several miles to eke out the minuscule wages. <laughs> But despite this kind of failure, our netas are still putting up a brave face hoping that migrant workers will come and vote. Will at least now the misery of the migrant labor class move our netas to act decisively? A News 9 report.